Hey everybody, welcome back once again to Science in 10. Igneous. This term alone invokes a sense of power and trepidation. Going back to the Latin roots of the word, igneous literally means of fire, burning hot or glowing. A perfect fit for rocks that are created through fire. But fire in a metaphorical sense. Igneous rocks form when a melt, magma in Earth's interior, or lava on the Earth's surface, crystallizes into a solid. Though, I admit, sometimes the eruption of lava can look very similar to a fountain of fire. As you might guess, it takes an incredible amount of heat to keep rocks molten. Much more heat than is generally present at the Earth's surface or within the Earth's crust. So when a body of melt works its way into the crust, either above a subduction zone, at a mid-ocean ridge, or hotspots, it begins to lose heat. As the melt cools, it also begins to crystallize. Melts that fully crystallize within Earth's interior form intrusive igneous rocks, and melts that work their way to the surface as lava crystallize to form extrusive igneous rocks. To describe and classify igneous rocks, we use two main criteria. First, the composition of the rock. What minerals and in what percentages are they present within the rock? And second, what is the rock's texture? For igneous rocks, we will define rock texture as the size and arrangement of the individual crystals or pieces that compose the rock. In general, the composition of an igneous rock is based on the amount of silica present in the rock. Rocks with a low amount of silica and high amounts of iron and magnesium are classified as mafic to ultramafic, and rocks with high amounts of silica and other elements like potassium, sodium, and aluminum are considered felsic. Rocks that are in between mafic and felsic are varying degrees of intermediate composition. Specific rock names are based on their mafic, intermediate, or felsic composition. Peridotites and comatites are ultramafic, consisting primarily of olivine and pyroxene. Gabbro and basalt are mafic and consist of olivine, pyroxene, calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar, and some hornblende. Diorites and andesites are on the mafic end of intermediate and consist of pyroxene, hornblende, and plagioclase feldspar. Granodiorite and dacite are on the felsic end of intermediate and consist of sodium-rich plagioclase feldspar, some hornblende, some potassium feldspar, and some quartz. There also may be minor amounts of muscovite and biotite micas present as well. Granites and rhyolites are the felsic end of the composition spectrum. These rocks are primarily quartz, potassium feldspar, sodium-rich plagioclase feldspar, and minor amounts of mica and hornblende. The specific names given to rocks of mafic, intermediate, and felsic compositions are based on whether a rock is intrusive or extrusive. For example, a rhyolite and a granite are both felsic. Both have the same composition, but the granite is intrusive and the rhyolite is extrusive. So, how do we determine intrusive versus extrusive? The primary way is to interpret the rock's texture. Again, the texture of an igneous rock is defined as the size and arrangement of the crystals within the rock itself. This texture is a direct result of the processes that form the rock, and it records the cooling and crystallization history of that particular rock. Here are the main types of igneous textures and what they record about a rock's crystallization history. Phaneritic rocks are composed entirely of macroscopic visible crystals. This texture reflects a slow crystallization of the melt, allowing large mineral grains to form. Phaneritic rocks are almost exclusively intrusive. Aphanitic rocks are composed entirely of microscopic, invisible to the naked eye crystals. This texture is indicative of a very rapid crystallization common to extrusive igneous rocks or intrusions that crystallize rapidly near the Earth's surface. Porphyritic rocks have two distinct crystal sizes present, either large macroscopic crystals present within an aphanitic ground mass for extrusive rocks, or determinably larger crystals within a phaneritic matrix for intrusive rocks. These larger crystals are called phenocrysts. Rocks with a porphyritic texture record a two-stage crystallization history, slow at first, allowing the phenocryst to form, then less slow or rapid, resulting in the remaining melt forming much smaller crystals. Pegmatitic rocks are composed entirely of large interlocking crystals that can be over 2.5 centimeters in size and are definitely intrusive. A rock with a pegmatitic texture is called a pegmatite. 
Glassy textures form when a melt cools so quickly that none of the atoms or ions in the lava have time to bond and form basic crystalline structures of minerals. This rapid cooling is called quenching and is common to some extrusive rocks. For example, obsidian. Vesicular textures are when an extrusive rock is full of round or elongate holes or vesicles. This texture will form when a melt has a high volatile or dissolved gas content. As the melt erupts, the dissolved gases exolve to form bubbles. If the lava crystallizes quickly enough, the bubbles become trapped in the rock. Some rocks have such a high percentage of vesicles that the rock itself will actually float. Finally, pyroclastic or fragmental igneous rocks are characterized by a mixture of volcanic ash, lithic fragments, and pumice. This texture forms from violent, explosive volcanic eruptions that produce huge amounts of ash and other pyroclastic debris. When the ash and debris fall back to the ground, it compacts and fuses together. A common type of igneous rock with a pyroclastic texture is a tuff. Welded tuff if the rock is completely fused, and lithic tuff if it contains a high percentage of rock or pumice fragments. So, there we go. Rocks born of fire. What's pretty cool is that igneous rocks are likely the very first type of rock to form on the Earth about four and a half billion years ago. And igneous rocks are the youngest rocks on Earth, and these are extrusive rocks forming right now. Though, considering the temperature of these baby rocks is probably around 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, I really wouldn't want to go pick one of them up for a while. Catch you next time.